Look who's here. All our fans are out there. Guess what? I got a new Azula. It's not this one. This is the one I won uh, several years ago off of Knives Live TV. And this one is obviously pink. And ever since winning this one, I've always wanted a different Azula. One that uh, was not pink. Um, yes, I could have stripped this one down. And I thought about stripping it down many a times. But I'm glad I did not because... As you can see here, that is Rat Cutlery Company, which marks this as one of the earlier Azulas. And this is also in pink, which is an uncommon color. They just don't make a lot of them in pink. So it's kind of a collector's item. If you notice, Rat Cutlery there, Rowan here. So this is made after the split from Ontario. Uh, and when uh, Essie started having their knives made by Rowan, and uh, all Azulas, by the way, are made by Rowan. None of them were ever made by Ontario, from what I understand. But it is an Azula, or the one with the little bullet ant on there. I will take some pictures of this one, com comparing it to my new Azula. But this uh, video is not about my pink Azula. I've got one on that already. And uh, you can get to that through the uh, link in the description. Let's take a look at my new Izula, which I'm pretty excited about. And so here it is, the big box. Really big box considering the size of the knife. I think the box is like nine inches by four and a half inches by about two and a half, three inches tall. Um, this is a sleeve that goes over the box. Um, the first Azula I got just came in a plastic bag. I don't know if that's because uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works just sent me the knife and skipped the packaging, or if um, Essie has changed uh, the way they package their material. Um, in any case, what you have here is a sleeve over the box. It's just a white cardboard box, which is a pretty nice box. I'll probably find a use for it. And then the, uh, the little Essie sleeve, made in USA. And then on the back side here, you have some um, survival kind of information on there. Um, uh, Randall Adventure Training. I mean, they are the ones who make the Essie knives. So, or they're the owners of Essie knives. They're actually made by Rowan out in, uh, well, it says right there where it's made. Um, made in Idaho Falls, Idaho. So that's where your Essie knives come from. Anyone who um, collects Essie knives or uses Essie knives knows all that already. Matter of fact, uh, anyone who uses Essie knives is going to look at this uh, video, especially those who are doing um, survival training and everything. And they're going to look at this and uh, look at the entire video as kind of a joke because I'm not one of those people. I'm not a survivalist. I have uh, Those days are long, long behind me. Uh, the reason I picked up the SE is because, well, like I said, I've just always wanted a new Azula. I got the pink one, I liked it, and I just always wanted another one. So that's why I picked this up. Yes, I will use it, but um, I'll use it when I, I'm out hiking and stuff. As you can see, I've already opened it because, well, <laughs> must have done this video about four or five times before I finally thought this one was good enough. And here we have it. The um, Izula that I picked up, it is uh, the black oxide version of the Azula. Uh, the uh, little plastic uh, scabbard has changed a little bit. Um, do I have the old one here somewhere? You can see the original version had a long slip across the top. I kind of like that long slip, but this one just has... Uh, four screw holes in it. Uh, I guess you could, uh, if you wanted to, you could uh, drill this out if you wanted to. I don't know. Anyway, um, that's the new black scabbard with my black oxide coated Azula. Um, I went th with the black oxide coating instead of the powder coating because uh, I did think that the powder coating on the pink knife was kind of thick. And I wanted something a little thinner. And uh, the oxide coating is much thinner. And also when I was looking at the pictures of it online, it's like, oh, that looks like it's already been used. So 
it's going to um, cover any kind of use up really well so that's why I went and grabbed the black oxide coating all superficial reasons I, I think uh, from what I understand I, I've looked at some of the reviews and people have said that the uh, the powder th there's mixed reviews on it the powder coating uh, slices through better than the oxide coating or not um, that's a debate that somebody else is going to have to make but I did like the finish of the black oxide over the powder coating better so that's why I went with it and uh, I do know what I can say comparing the, the jimping on the back of the blades here the jimping on the uh, uh, black oxide um, grips a little bit better than the one on the pink powder coating so now that might be because this one is 10 years old and this one is a newer um, um, newer uh, Izula so they may have improved the jimping uh, they're too far apart for me to actually say that well yeah it's not as good all I got is a, a 10 year old one and a relatively newer one um, but the jimping on this one feels pretty good maybe the jimping on the new powder coating is also just as well um, I also know why I decided to cord wrap this right away because uh, without a handle this thing is not the most comfortable thing in the world so um, it's uh, usually sold this way without a handle I know the Azula 2 comes with a, a handle also uh, I don't know if the uh, if um, if you can get the Azula shipped with a handle they do sell aftermarket handles and I do have a handle that I'm going to put on there and I'll show that in this video as well but I do know that you are going to definitely want to wrap that handle because uh, if you're going to be using this for any length of time without some kind of a, a cord wrapping or handle on it it's not going to feel the most comfortable thing in the world uh, but I do know that it is nice and light because basically you just got a skeletonized uh, uh, blade blank here made out of a uh, 1095 carbon steel um, so that's what I can tell you so far about the Azula uh, the one I got came with the uh, clip plate here I am NOT going to be using the clip plate uh, because uh, well I just don't like uh, these kind of belt clips I've, I've never been a fan of them uh, I know a lot of people like them and I know that they are nice and sturdy and strong but if you do not have an Azula and you're thinking about picking one of these up and you do want to use the uh, belt clip I will go over that real quick um, first of all you've got four holes here and four holes there if you notice you can uh, clip it uh, uh, vertical or horizontal so you can use it uh, uh, as a um, a scout carry or whatever you want to call it the horizontal uh, carry or vertical carry with it and um, obviously it can also be left or right hand and it can also be uh, if you wanted to carry it uh, right handed with the with the edge up you can do it that way if you wanted to do it right handed with the edge down you can obviously do it that way too so um, because of the way the positioning is with the holes on here you can pretty much carry this knife any way you want to with the belt clip so that's pretty cool I know uh, uh, Tops has one that rotates around so you can get it at all sorts of different angles but that is a much larger belt clip than what you have on this one so uh, I actually like this belt clip better than what I see in the tops even though at the tops you could get it at a 45 degree angle if you wanted to no no way to get this at a 45 degree angle unless you just decided to use one screw not a good idea uh, so that's what I can tell you about this particular belt clip and you see there USA JRM whoever JRM is uh, I've also seen that these uh, sheets might be made in China I don't know um, this one uh, is not stamped one way or the other that's for someone else to decide on I should also mention that uh, 
included with the belt clip are four little compression screws to that you can use to add it to the uh, the uh, the scabbard and if you notice those are hooked on with a uh, Phillips screwdriver which is a good idea and these are also sometimes called uh, Chicago screws in any case uh, they are little compression screws that you can use to attach it to attach the sheet to the belt clip got four of them in there um, and I will be using those later but not for the belt clip other things that came in the packaging um, we got the Randall Adventure Training uh, School of Survival sticker and Essie sticker which was nice it's always nice to get a little swag and then um, a flyer here for the Azula the Azula 2 and the Kandaroo which is uh, probably the smallest of the fixed blades maybe they have something smaller I don't know uh, but that's the three that are listed here because all three of those will fit uh, this particular sheath I believe in any case the other information that is included in there is depending on what you ordered what you would get so uh, you see um, you start with the basic which is the one I got which has the belt clip and the sheath and the knife and then if you order the uh, the the, the uh, SE knife with kit you get the paracord and all this other stuff the snap hook and all this other stuff um, and then uh, they show you here how to cord wrap your knife uh, I followed that instruction when I did the uh, the pink cord wrapping pretty much and uh, I was very impressed with how easy it is to do that so uh, and that is probably the least expensive way to um, to put a handle on there is the cord wrap it but I went ahead and went beyond that and you see here the snap hook that you can also use or belt carrying using paracord so you could also just tie it to your uh, your belt if you did not want to use the uh, clip so there's all sorts of different things that come in the little packaging uh, so that's pretty cool otherwise you also got uh, two cards here oh one card the Randall Adventure Training card and that card uh, is a credit card size uh, card uh, with a little bit of information in there on uh, well, a little survival information doesn't take up any space so if you uh, want to act like you know a lot about survival or something throw that in your uh, wallet uh, it is a pretty cool card I know I'm making a little bit of fun with it but I really shouldn't because I know that there are people who practice survival and actually do it for a living and uh, a card like that would come in handy especially for a novice so um, all in all, uh, some pretty cool stuff in the box. And uh, well, let's go back to the uh, knife now. Like I mentioned, it's in 1095 carbon steel. Uh, and I wanted to put a handle on this. So I went ahead and ordered a handle. And I also ordered a new sheath backing for it. So let's go over those as long as I'm doing this. Uh, and then... Uh, um, we'll finish it up with uh, my final thoughts once I've got it all in place. Now my first thought was to go ahead and grab some OD paracord and cord wrap this knife in the same fashion that I did the pink Azula. But as much as, well, this really does feel comfortable in the hand and everything, I just thought, no, I, I want to put some proper handles on the knife uh, because if I am actually going to take it out in the woods and use it a lot, that paracord is going to get nice and dirty and stinky and everything else, and I don't want to deal with that. I'd rather have a proper handle on the knife. I've always thought of uh, cord wrapping a handle as something you do as a field expedient when something is broke. They, they look great, but... Um, that really isn't uh, should not be your first choice that that's just my opinion I don't think cord wrapping is the way to go so I decided what the heck I will go ahead and buy a set of um, aftermarket handles uh, for the Azula uh, I also had thought about carving one out of wood but I thought no I want this to be a modern looking knife and so I wanted to go ahead and grab the Azula uh, um, lend in my car to handles and put those on there and they're not that expensive they're like uh, 
somewhere between 14 and $20, somewhere around there, depending on who you're getting them from. And the Azula 2, which is a, has a larger handle actually, uh, many of those actually come with the micarta handle already on it. I don't know if the Azula has ever sold with the handle or not. I've always seen uh, the handle as something sold separately as an aftermarket item. In any case, here's the handle. I opted to go with the uh, Olive Drab uh, Linen Micarta handles. And, um, well, let's get them out of the package and take a look at them. Came with a, basically a business card. Again, with the survival information on the back and all the uh, contact information and everything. And here are the handles. And uh, the first thing I saw when I looked at that is that is not olive drab. It looks, um, I guess it could be, but it is a very light color and then the second thing I noticed uh, was the torque bits um, I really don't like uh, those kind of screws but that's what they sold them with I would have much rather had uh, uh, this be able to take apart with a Phillips driver but what you need in order to um, take the handles on and off is a uh, T15 torque bit and so and as it is on both sides you basically need two of them in order to do this easily because it will spin on you and uh, it is already spinning but it's not too tight up oh, going the wrong got the wrong side well, let's get the little screws out And once you get the handle apart, it comes uh, with the screws in place. So once you get the handle apart, you'll see what you have here. You got a nice slab of micarta and another slab of micarta. And then some kind of heavy plastic uh, insert in between there, which will line up with the knife handle uh, so that you make sure that your handle is in the right place. And if you notice, there is a little bit of gap here. so. If you wanted to hide a little something inside the handle, you could. Um, you could also possibly even drill this out a little bit and or sand it down a little bit and make it even thinner so that you could put more stuff on the inside of the handle. Um, but you're really not going to get much inside there. It is, um, there's just not that much space. Um, can you see there? looks like about an eighth of an inch of a space in there maybe a little less maybe a little more and then you can uh, get your handle on place and then screw it on again I the only my only real negative on this is I wish they would have used uh, Phillips screws that would have uh, been a step up for me is if they would have used Phillips screws uh, especially considering this is uh, for survival situations um, I can't imagine the handle breaking or anything but uh, if you wanted to get that handle off or if you wanted to store something inside the handle um, a Phillips screw would be a, a better choice than a, a torque drive because how often are you going to have one of these with you in the woods whereas with a, a Phillips screw well if you're carrying a, uh, a Swiss Army knife with you and it, <laughs> they actually sell a uh, uh, some kind of survival packet that includes a uh, Victorinox Tinker in there so um, which has a Phillips driver on it so I would think that that's what they should be doing it, of course who am I to tell uh, Essie what to do with their knives but I got a feeling a lot of people would like these handles better if they were Phillips uh, screws in there but now that the handle is on uh, and it's nice and tight the the knife does feel better um, I think it would be nicer if this handle went all the way around like it does on the Azula 2 I think they call this the uh, bikini handle 
Uh, I think it'd be nicer if it covered around the top of the loop too, then it would uh, feel even better in the hand. Yeah, you know what? Um, I think I can see why a lot of people end up cord wrapping their uh, their Azula because uh, in many ways, uh, you know, just this real quick uh, field between the two. Um, I think the the cord wrapping feels more comfortable than the little handles. Um, I might be second uh, thinking or thinking twice about these handles. But uh, I'll give it a try, see how it feels, and then maybe I will try cord wrapping it and see if that feels a little better or not. In any case, uh, that's what the handle, what it looks like with the little handles on there. Um, it's definitely more comfortable than nothing. I'll give it that much. But I do wish the handle was all the way around to the back, and I wish it used uh, Phillips screws instead. Um, but yeah, you definitely get a better grip with the knife with the handle. Um, I don't know if you get a better grip with the knife than you do with uh, paracord, though. That's really going to be... Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of debate on that uh, and there probably has been a lot of debate on that if the handles are better than paracord or not um, I'm leaning towards paracord right now but I will definitely give the knife a try with the handles first to see how well it goes because hey I invested money in the handles, so I want to see if, the, if I wasted my money or not let's move on to the uh, scabbard because like I said I'm not going to use the clip I've also bought a Molly compatible uh, scabbard that I want to, or Molly compatible sheath that I want to use with this scabbard. Now the sheath did not come with uh, with the screws to attach it to the scabbard, and I think they actually should go ahead and do that. Uh, I know it's going to cost them a little bit of money, but when you consider you're selling these uh, these sheaths for somewhere between fifteen and twenty dollars, um, throwing in a couple screws uh, is really you know just tossing us a little bone. And they really should have tossed in the, the screws for this. Fortunately, if you got the metal backing plate, then you already have the screws that came with that. Uh, where are they at? And those screws are what you're going to need to use to attach the uh, the scabbard. To the back of the sheath and uh, well uh, let me do that and uh, I'll break away real quick and get started on that okay so I've started attaching this as you can see I'm setting it up for left hand carry because I'm left-handed I started with the compression screws uh, backings here and then I've got the Phillips portion in the front I've uh, basically hand tightened it so far uh, and uh well it's looking all right um and now to finish it off i need to uh tighten it down and i'm just basically using my spartan light here with my phillips driver which you know is something that uh i'm more likely to have in the woods than a torque bed so i'm glad that this has the phillips screws in it and What I'm doing is I'm going opposite screws like you would do with a uh, when you're changing a tire so that I can get this uh, tightened all around uh, with about the same amount of uh, torque on the screws. I don't want to over tighten but I do want to make sure it doesn't come loose. I suppose um, depending on how you feel you could uh, also put the, the Phillips heads in the back. I figured I wanted the Phillips in the front so I can tighten them if I need to easily. Um, I don't want to deal with having to take it off or anything to tighten it up. You got four screws so the chances of all of them coming loose at the same time and falling out are pretty much slim and none unless you're an idiot. Um, you have this would be the hole for your tie down so your tie down is still 
uh, based off of the scabbard. It does not pass all the way through here. Uh, and then, uh, well, you hook your knife in there. It is uh, backed off a little bit so that the handle uh, does not get in the way. A little hard to push in, but it comes out easy enough. Um, Got to remember, I'm not actually. This is a brand new sheath, too. Got to break it in a bit. Um, and then if you notice up here, you've got this green elastic thing here. And that is um, a second way to secure the knife. And it is tight. Uh, but once you have the knife like that, uh, the odds of it falling out are slim and none, regardless of how you're carrying it. You could actually carry this upside down and it's not going to fall out. And, and this is the second point of... Uh, restraint on the knife and that basically is what turns this uh, type of uh, molly sheath into a jump certified sheath so is that important to me not really I'm, I'm not a paratrooper or anything but if someone were using the uh, Izula in the military or something then this uh, this sheath would make a lot more sense to them or if anyone were just um, you know, using this knife uh, while while parachuting or anything, uh, it would become in it would come in really handy because uh, the chances of the knife falling out are pretty much slim and none. And in order for a sheath to be considered uh, jump certified, it needs two retaining points. So you have the uh, the lock and the sheath acting as one retaining point, and this up here acting as a second retaining point, and it really has the knife secure. This could also become really handy if somebody were doing something like um, rock climbing or anything else where the, the potential, uh, though slim, uh, the potential of the knife falling out is there. And then if you want the uh, knife more readily available, you just don't put the, uh, the nylon uh, or this uh, elastic band across the top. Um, right now the sheath, I, it really locks up tight, um, but I'm pretty happy with it. I, I do like the fact that this is something that I will be able to hang off of my belt a little bit easier than the belt clip, but I am also going to probably put some tape over that Velcro so I don't have to deal with it, um, or either that or just remove the Velcro entirely. I'm not ready yet to uh, pick up a 38 millimeter belt clip for it. Uh, but they are available, and it is something that uh, you see a lot with uh, Molly components. So I do like uh, the sheath a lot better this way than with the uh, basic belt clip. So if you're a person who's looking for a more uh, standardized sheath, uh, this might be the way to go. Uh, the sheath uh, um, accessory will run you somewhere around $15 or $20 as well. So. Uh, the thing with the uh, the Azula is uh, it can become a very expensive knife very quickly once you start accessorizing it. But uh, I'm happy with it, and I will be taking it out in the woods and doing a few things with it. And uh, it's a really nice size knife, and I'm getting comfortable with the uh, the grip. So we'll see how it all works out, and I'll let you know more in a follow-up video. But for right now. There's my new Azula, and I'm pretty happy with it. Did I mention that the Azula is Essie's best-selling knife? They have sold well over 100,000 of these since uh, production first began, and I know there are people who collect Azulas. I hope I do not become one of them. Uh, I hope this is the last Azula I pick up. Um, they are warranted for life of the knife, so... You can always send it in if it gets broken or anything or damaged. So there's that cool thing. And their forever warranty is like they don't care what happened. Your fault, their fault, anybody's fault. They'll replace the knife. So you only really need to buy one in your entire life. But yet they've sold well over 100,000 of these. And, uh, well, the other thing about them is because of all the little add-ons and... uh 
doodads that you can get with it. It is also a knife that will nickel and dime you to death. So be careful if you decide to pick up an Azula because they are pretty cool, but they can also become very expensive. Anyway, stick around for the slideshow. Talk to you again soon. Right, Kitty?